angels are coming over this church tonight. Why? Because when the angel of the Lord came, the light of God shone in the prison. Uh, we greet all our viewers on TBN. We greet our church this morning. And we praise God for what he will do this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible uh, it speaks so much about the prophetic. And today I want to speak about the Holy Spirit is the prophetic voice of God. The Holy Spirit is the voice of God. So we need to understand what 2 Peter 1.21 tells us. For no prophecy ever originated because some man willed it to do to do so, it never came by human impulse. But men spoke from God who were born along and moved and impelled by the Holy Spirit. So what we must understand is that all prophecy never originates from any man. It always operates from the Spirit of God. We have to understand that God's word is ultimate. Everything that we do in life, we must con understand that we need to conform and transform to the word of God. If we are going to be successful, the word of God must be priority in your life. You see, the Bible is God's prophetic book. It is God's prophetic voice. It is, it is the word of God to the children of God. And so we must understand no human impulse at a, or any man because of his own will as written the word of God. Holy men inspired by the Holy Spirit wrote the word of God. Can somebody shout amen in this place? We thank God for his word. But we thank God that the men who wrote the Bible were inspired by the spirit of the living God. You see, whenever God speaks and whatever God speaks, whatever he speaks will come to pass in your life. God's word is sure. I don't believe that any demon or any devil or any principality or power or ruler of darkness can take the word of God away from us. That's why we as the children of God, we have the word of God. We have the revelation of the word of God. And the word of God is ultimate in our lives. You must understand that every prophetic word God declared over your life, I declare in this season, it shall manifest in your life. If God said you blessed, well the blessing is going to locate you in the season. If God said you healed, well, the healing is going to locate somebody in the season. If God said that you are the head and not the tail, I declare that favor is coming for your promotion in the mighty, powerful, awesome name of a living God. And his name is Jesus. So we must understand when a prophet predicts or foretells, he sees the future in the light of the present. The Bible tells us that whatever is in your future, when a prophet tells you that you're blessed, it's going to locate you because you're going to be blessed. If the prophet says that you are healed, you're going to be healed. Whatever the prophet says, led by the Spirit of God, is going to manifest in your life in the season. You must understand that no matter what the enemy or the devil tells you or whatever your mind tells you, not what you think, not what your intellect is giving you, uh, reasoning and doubt and worry and anxiety. I've come to tell you that the spirit of the Lord is telling you today that what God prophesied in your life is about to manifest. So we learn this throughout the Bible. That the Bible tells us, even in Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, the Bible says that in verse number, let me read verse number 9, the latter part. It says, there is no one else. I am God and there is none like me. You see, God's word is final. There is no one else. You see, we all have to understand our relationship must be developed with the living God. Our life must be with the word of God. We must dissect the word. We must eat the word. We must meditate upon the word because the word will grant us success. You see, in verse 10, it tells us, declaring the end and the result from the beginning, from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure and purpose. You see, what God does is that before the end can happen, he declares it from the beginning. Many people don't understand that ministry, callings, giftings has already been declared by God. You see, one thing we cannot fake is calling of God, grace of God, giftings of God. God has declared something over your life when you were born or before you even were born. How do I know this? Let's look at what Jeremiah 1 5 tells us. You see, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 1 4 and 5, it says, Then the word of the Lord came 
to me, Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you, before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. But God said to Jeremiah, listen, I'm the God that declares the end from the beginning. That means before it can happen, I already declared it. You see how wonderful this is. There are some things that have been declared over your family. There are some things that have been declared over your life. There are some things that have been declared over your finance. There are some things that have been declared over your health. There are some things that God has already declared over you. You see, you, you can try everything in the flesh. But whatever is in the plan and will of God for your life, I declare it's coming to pass in the name of Jesus. So when God spoke to Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, even before your parents thought about you, I thought about you. You see, I had an ordination service in the presence of heaven. I approved you. I, I authorized you. I, I gave you the power. I gave you the word. He said, I separated you. I consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Don't think that man has appointed you a prophet. I'm telling you that God has appointed you already for a specific task and purpose upon the face of the earth. And I prophesy today that that task is coming to pass in your life today. You see, many times the devil will try to oppress you from your future. The enemy will try to keep you limited. You see, it's not, not God that wants to limit us. It is only the enemy that wants to oppress the plan of God, that wants to fight the plan of God, that does not want the plan of God to come to pass. But today I declare there's enough anointing in this room to break every yoke of Satan in the mighty name of Jesus and I release that fire upon somebody today that is trusting God for a breakthrough. You might have been locked in a cage. You might have been feeling trapped. You might feel oppressed. But today Today, whatever is inside of you that God prophesied, I declare it's going to flow out of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody praise God let you know that this is about to happen to you, that the blood works? You see, God wants to set you free. God wants to transform you. God wants to change you. God wants to take you to another dimension. God wants to grant you divine and supernatural wisdom to get to your divine destiny that God has ordained for you. There are people that are coming into their destiny today in the name of Jesus. You are coming into your purpose by the power of the Holy Ghost because God wants to take you to a new level. God wants to take you to a new dimension. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody is about to go to another level. Somebody is about to go to a new dimension. Somebody is about to shift in the name of Jesus why? Not because I'm telling you, but because before you were ordained in your mother's womb, God said, this guy is going to be a prophet. And he said, Jeremiah, speak my son. I put an anointing upon you to prophesy to the nations. He never came to a small town. He said, Jeremiah, you're going to speak to nations and nations are going to bow because I'm putting my word, I'm putting my anointing, I'm putting my revelation upon you. Somebody is getting an anointing. I tell you something, no matter what the devil tries, no matter what Satan may try, Jesus is greater than any demonic activity, any satanic power, anything that tries to hinder you. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. This is your day for your miracle. This is your day for your breakthrough. Because it doesn't happen by some intellectual thought. It happens through the grace of God, through the anointing, through the fire, through the Holy Ghost. When the power of God comes upon you and the spirit of God touches you, it ignites a passion within you for great things for the kingdom of the most high God. It is the passion of God that comes through the spirit of God. So holy men, we're moved by the spirit of God. You see what John 13, 19 tells us. It says, I tell you this now before it occurs so that when it does take place, you may be persuaded and believe that I am he who I say I am, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. So what he's saying is that, listen, church, before it takes place, I have prophesied it over your life. Great things are in store for you. Great things are in store for your children. Great things are in store for your family. Let me tell you the place you was in yesterday, you will never be there tomorrow because Christ has spoken something over your life. I don't care what the circumstance may look like and the circumstance may look bad, but I've come to tell somebody, I don't care what the circumstance looks like. It is all what God prophesies and says in his word. I believe it, I receive it, I download it into my spirit man and I manifest it. You see, it tells you something before it occurs. May you have dreams. May you have visions. 
May you receive the direction from the Spirit of God. May your spiritual ears be open today. May your spiritual eyes be open today. You will see something you never saw in your life. You will hear something from the Spirit of God you never heard in your life. Because God wants to speak into somebody's life. God wants to give you a prophetic word. God wants to download something into your system. When you get this word, nothing can stand in your way. Nothing can hold you down. That's why the Bible says, before it occurs and when it does take place, you may be persuaded and believe that I am the one who prophesied it over you, Jesus Christ. Before it happens, you are shifting. You see, nobody can stop you when God is with you. Child of God, you need to believe this, that God spoke something over your life. You receive it, you accept it, and you receive the word, and the word will manifest in and through you. Something big is about to locate somebody in this place. Something great is about to locate somebody in this place. Something supernatural. You see, there are many natural thinkers, but there's also supernatural thinkers. If you think supernaturally, you will accelerate beyond people who think in the natural intellect or in the wisdom of men. But I need the wisdom of God more than the wisdom of man. When I get the wisdom of God, I can know things that God wants me to know. I don't want to know things, just things only that are, that are of earthly value to me. I want to know things that are of spiritual heavenly value. Things that I can birth me into the next dimension with God. Amen. You see, the book of 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 tells us, Every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration and profitable for instruction, for reproof, for the conviction of sin, for the correction of error and discipline in obedience and for the training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will in thought, purpose and action. So that a man of God may be complete and proficient, well fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. You see, every scripture that God has given us, we must understand that God instructs us. We also got to come to the place of obedience for reproof, for conviction of sin. We can't be living in sin and then saying, Lord, hey, how, how come things are not happening in my life? How come I'm not coming to the place of fulfillment? You see, for the conviction of sin and correction of error, the Bible tells us that even if we go off the track, the grace of God is there for us. But we have to be corrected from error and come back to the will of God. It is there for discipline. Many of us don't want discipline. Sometimes people may come to church, but they come to church for the wrong reasons. They come to the kingdom of God for the wrong reasons in that they will probably gossip, backbite, all sorts of things. They have the wrong motive and intention. They're still operating in the flesh. Let me tell you something. You cannot fulfill the, God, word, the will of God in your life in the flesh. You've got to get into the spirit realm of thinking. So we must understand that the word of God is for discipline. We need to be disciplined in the house of God. The Bible tells us it is for training in righteousness. You can't be an unrighteous person expecting the anointing to locate you and allow you to flow in another dimension. You've got to come to the righteous place, to the blood of Jesus, to the grace of God and understand that God has washed me in his blood. I need to know this. It is for training in righteousness. What is the training? The training of what we are thinking. That's why it says it is your thought. It is your purpose. It is your action. You see, whatever you're thinking will determine your action. Whatever you think will determine what you do in life. So if you cannot think right, you will never do right. If you do not think good thoughts and peaceful thoughts and loving thoughts, you will never be able to have the, to, the action to follow those thoughts. So whatever your thoughts are, is what your action is going to be. So if you're constantly thinking negativity, you are going to, you're going to allow negative seeds to be planted in your life and you will never become the tree that is planted by the river of water that is able to bear fruit in season. So that's why the Bible tells us that we need to meditate on the word of God. We need the word to be in us. We need the life-giving power of God to be in us. So when you meditate on the word, you accelerate. When you meditate on the word and you conform to the word, you operate in the supernatural because we must be willing to be corrected. We must be willing to be transformed. We must be willing to be changed. We must not say that, listen, I know everything and that's it and have to walk around with a spirit of pride because pride is the greatest killer to your destiny. Many people don't know this, but when you have pride, you will never go anywhere in life. I'm telling you, when you come to the place of humility and humbleness and obedience to the word of God, God can lift you up. No man can lift himself up. Try all you want to try because you'll come to a place where you'll get cut off. You have to have the word of God in your life.
So John 14, 15 and 16 tells us something. That we need to have a relationship with God. We need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You see, the Bible tells us in verse 15, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commands. If you love God, you'll want to obey God. If you love God, you won't want to rebel against God. If you love God, you'll want to serve God. If you love God, you want to be committed and dedicated and passionate about God. You see, in the book of John 14 and verse number 16, it says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, the counselor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, and the standby. He may remain with you forever. You see, when we obey God, then we attract the anointing. When we obey God, we attract the supernatural. You see, God wants you to know something. We ask for many things in life. We ask for, for different things, maybe sometimes maybe materialistic things. But when we think about God, God wants his children also to ask for the comforter, to ask for the counselor. You see, when you need help, you know what you need? You need the Holy Ghost to be your helper. I've come to tell somebody today that you have a comforter in the times of grief, in the times of sorrow, the comforter will come in. Many people will try to comfort you, but the greatest comforter is the Spirit of God. I've come to tell somebody today, if you need to be counseled, the Holy Ghost wants to counsel you. If you need to be helped, I've come to tell you today that my greatest helper is the Spirit of the living God. Your greatest strength is the Spirit of the living God. You see, when the Holy Ghost gets next to you and he helps you, people will watch what the Lord is doing. Because why? We can try and help ourselves but God is not calling us to help ourselves he's calling us to depend upon the helper which is the spirit of the living God and so when the spirit of God begins to help you through your trials and through your problems and difficulties you're going to see results you never saw before you see you can try to help yourself and sometimes people have tried and failed helping themselves I'm talking about having a divine connection with the spirit of God to help you today somebody is going to get help from the spirit of the living God in the presence of the Lord you tried everything you have done everything but the Holy Ghost wants to help somebody today to get to another level so we must understand that he is your intercessor there are times when you're so low you can't pray and suddenly you hear from inside of you I've come to prophesy to somebody you can pray but when the Holy Ghost arrests you and the gift of tongues operates in you you're going to shift to another level I've come to the place where I said Lord yes I can intercede but it is better when the Holy Spirit intercedes for me on behalf of me to the Father somebody is about to get a revelation that God is going to pray for you by the time you go home today miracles are going to happen. You see, when you talk to supernatural, when the Holy Spirit intercedes for you, let me tell you something, your financial breakthrough will locate you. Your healing will locate you. Let me tell you, whatever you believe in God for will locate you. You know why? Because the Spirit of God searches the deep things of God. He knows the intimate things of God. He understands the call of God in your life. He understands the gifts that are within you. He understands the purpose of God. He understands everything about you. When the Spirit of the Lord gets inside of you, the Spirit of the Lord will begin to pray for you. I know I can pray, but I want God to pray for me from the inside out, and I pray God that you will give me tremendous and supernatural breakthroughs, because you, Holy Ghost, you know how to intercede for me. There is somebody, God is going to pray for you, and you're going to see miracles. You see, when Peter was being tempted, Jesus said, Peter, I have prayed for you. So Peter fell. He denied the Lord. But in the end, he said, this is that which the prophet Joel spoke. In the last days, there will be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Your sons and daughters will see, have, your old men will have dreams and the young men will have visions. And we know what he said. He said, listen, your sons and daughters will become prophetic. They will speak the word. They will prophesy the word. When the Holy Ghost prays for you, there's an activation of every gift in your body. Whatever God put in you will activate. You see, the Holy Ghost is your advocate. He's your lawyer. That means, listen, you don't need to defend yourself. When you have the spirit of the Lord upon you, the Lord will defend you. 
You don't need to worry about any lawyer. Let me tell all due respect to all the lawyers in the house. But I'm talking about a spiritual lawyer. A lawyer from heaven that knows how to defend you. You know, when people say bad things about you, the lawyer will stand up and say, Hey, Rebako Talarabasete, Reko Talarabasete. Has anybody been accused before? Has anybody been put down? Well, the lawyer is in the house. Your defender is here. When people say negative things about you, you don't need to worry about what they say because I'm telling you something. I have an advocate who can fight for me. People can judge you, people can criticize you. People can condemn you, but I want to tell somebody today that is even watching on television that the lawyer is going to defend you, which is the spirit of the living God. Can somebody shout amen? You may be even at work and people disrespect you. you disadvantage. But let me tell you something. Think again. You have the power within you to accelerate, to operate in the supernatural, to rise to victory. I'm telling you something, church, that the Holy Ghost is going to speak for you. He's going to defend you. He's going to help you. He's going to intercede for you. It goes on to say that the Holy Ghost is a strengthener. When I'm weak, he is strong. Come on. Have you felt like you feel weak? You can't do anything? I'll tell you something. The Holy Spirit is your strengthener. Everybody else can tell to strengthen you and even some people take some medication to be strengthened but I've come to tell you today I rely upon my strength from the spirit of the living God somebody get some supernatural strength and download into your body today because the strengthener is in the house can somebody say amen the strengthener is in the house the Bible tells us is your standby you know what many people they rely on different people to stand by. Sometimes we rely on the security company to stand by. But I've come to tell you something. That the one that wants to stand by you. You see, humans will let you down. You know, this is the reality. One day you can go up, next day you can be down. But the spirit of the Lord wants to stand by you. I said, somebody, can you say amen? The spirit of God wants to stand by you. When the spirit of God stands by you, the Bible says, he may remain with you forever. Look at it. He says, he will remain with you forever. That means, you know, he will never leave you. That even when you go down to the grave, absent in the body, present with the Lord, you won't die. He'll be there with you. Nobody else can give you this guarantee, but the Spirit of God can say to you today that even when you pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. Whatever you face, the Spirit of the Lord will stand by you. So today, church, we need to place emphasis on the Word of God, on the prophetic voice of God, on asking the Holy Spirit to be with us, living in us and operating through us in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody is going to do something extraordinary not because of our own intellect but because of the spirit of revelation and wisdom that comes through the spirit of God to shift you and advance you to a higher dimension in Christ. We need to depend on the word of God. So as we go along we read that in John 17 it, 14, 17, it tells us this. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive and welcome, take to its heart, because it does not see him, or know and recognize him. For he lives with you constantly, and be, and will be in you. How wonderful to know that God lives in every child of God. I've come to tell you today, God lives in every child of God. The spirit of God lives in me. The spirit of God lives in you. So you see, when the enemy comes to touch you, he's touching the living God. Why? Because God lives in me. God lives in you. You see, you need to have a revelation that God lives in me. Tell yourself, God lives in me. No matter what you're going through, God lives in me. No matter what I feel, God lives in me. No matter what my trial is, God lives in me. You need to prophesy, God lives in me. God lives in me. Every child of God has a right to say, God lives in me. Who lives in you? God lives in you. You see, the only time God doesn't live in you is when you operate in the flesh. Then you live in you. You take over and you silence God. I want to operate in the realm of the spirit. I want to connect to God. I want the spirit of God to lead me, direct me, shape me, mold me, transform me, conform me. Let's look at it. God lives in us. So when we begin to understand 
some things about God, we need to understand that God lives in us. That God operates in us. That God is the source of all blessings. That God is the source of everything that I will do and accomplish in my life. Irrespective of where I am and what I'm doing right now, it is God that is ultimately the source of everything that I do. So what, what, must, what must I do? I want to be in the plan of God. I want to be in the purpose of God. I want to be in the will of God. I don't want to be in my own will. I don't want my own flesh to get in the way of what the Spirit of God wants to activate and do in my life. What am I saying? Is that everything that Isaiah prophesied 700 years before Jesus could come came to pass in the life of Jesus. What am I saying today? That whatever God prophesied over your life if it could come to pass in the life of Jesus on the cross, if Jesus could come and say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he read what Isaiah prophesied, because Isaiah prophesied as a holy man of God, he prophesied the future. I've come to tell you today, every prophetic word that God has released into this place and into our lives, it shall come to pass in the mighty, powerful, awesome name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Amen.